Certain parts of the computer reach very high temperatures and need to be cooled down. If these parts are too hot, they either die or their lifespan is reduced. If they do die, the computer won't function. Traditionally, computers have fans to cool these parts. I will explain how the hot parts are cooled inside my laptop. Here, underneath this piece of copper, is the hot part. We don't want this part to be hot, so as you can see here, there is a fan. The fan gets cold air from outside and pushes it onto the copper tube here. And now the copper tube becomes cold due to this fan, and the relatively low temperature passes through the copper and therefore cools down the hot part here. Most computers run fine with the fans. However, some people find the urge to do what is called overclocking. Overclocking is the term used when a part of the computer is modified to provide better performance. Better performance usually means the parts will generate more and more heat. The fans which come with standard computers are known as stock fans, meaning they are designed to deal with a certain amount of heat which was designed for the parts to reach. Unfortunately, maniacs like me made these parts run faster than they are. They generate more heat than the fan can tolerate. It's kind of like telling someone fat to run for miles. Let's say the fat guy's mum, who will act as their computer's manufacturer, gave him energy drink, which will act as a stock fan. His mum expects him to work to such a standard in which the energy drink, which is a stock fan, will be sufficient to making sure he copes. His usual routine is walking, and his energy drink helps him to do this comfortably. Unfortunately, his evil physical education teacher, who is me, made him run. Obviously, the fat guy wasn't designed to run, and therefore the energy drink his mum provided was not sufficient to stop him from dying. Therefore, if the fat guy's dealer gave him steroids, which will act as a modified cooler, it will be able to run at a speed faster than it should with ease. In my example, the steroids acted as a modified cooler. One form of a modified cooler is water cooling. So what's the problem with buying a more powerful fan to cope with the increased heat? Fans, which are usually used, have a few problems. The first being, they are quite loud. Ever try playing a new game on an old computer? You'll hear the fans working fast and this sound to many people comes across as annoying. My parents, who do have a computer with fans, don't mind, as they are becoming pretty deaf. That's only problem one. Another problem is that fans gather a humongous amount of dust over the years. This makes the fan even louder, but more importantly, it makes the fan slower, which could result in it cooling your parts badly and leaving them to fry. The final issue with PC fans are that they take up a lot of space. So, do you want to overcome these issues, or just want to be less mainstream? Then water cooling is for you. So, how does water cooling work, I hear you ask? Well, let me explain the basics. It's got a bit of sounds to do with it, but I'm sure you will cope. The basic idea of water cooling is for the hot parts in your PC to transfer their heat into a liquid, which is then cooled either by a heatsink or a fan. Now I'll explain how it works in detail and all of the parts. The first part is a reservoir. This is a tank which contains all the liquid which will flow around your computer. The reservoir is a simple piece of tech which can be located inside or outside your PC case and is only really used for inserting the liquid into your system. Okay, so the reservoir contains two tubes, one being the output and one being the input. Uh, the liquid will flow through the output tube into what's called the pump. The pump also has an input and output. The device basically gets water from the reservoir and then pumps the liquid out. Uh, the tube leaving the pump then reaches what's called the block. The blocks are copper squares which stick onto the various parts which become warm. These parts include the CPU, GPU, RAM, hard drive and power supply. These also have an input and output tube. The final component is the radiator. Right, so now let's explain how it all works. 
First, you pour water into the reservoir. Even though the technology is called water cooling, the liquid used is actually called a coolant. There are different colours of coolant and some shine with the addition of UV light. However, the coolest feature of most coolants are that they don't conduct electricity. Therefore, if there is a leak in your water cooling setup, your components will not die. Isn't that amazing? Tap water can also be used for water cooling, but if there is a leak, you're done for. Some people buy distilled water, as it doesn't have the impurities of tap water, and therefore doesn't conduct electricity. Anyways, a question which I think might be floating around in your head is, why do we use liquid? Well, the process of any PC cooling is to extract the heat from the components. Computers with fan use the air as the medium in which the heat is transferred. However, according to Wikipedia, liquid is a much better thermal conductor than air, meaning it can transfer the heat more effectively than air. OK, so remember we put the coolant into the reservoir? The liquid then moves into the pump. The pump is required as the heat gathered from the PC components is concentrated on one bit of the liquid here. The heated liquid needs to be moved to the radiator. There are two types of radiator, passive and active. Both aim to get rid of the heat gathered in the coolant, but they both work differently. Passive radiators are the type found in cars. The now warm liquid heat is transferred to a large surface area of highly thermally conductive metals such as copper. The large surface area means that the metal can get rid of the heat gathered in the liquid. That's passive radiators. Active radiators have fans which blow into the liquid to cool it down. Personally, I disagree with active radiators. Even though generally they are more effective than passive radiators, they have fans, and I don't like fans. Now let me talk about the block. The block is a piece of metal, usually copper, which a liquid flows through. Now, just to make sure you understand everything, I shall briefly go through the cycle again. For this example, I'll be talking about how to cool the CPU, which is usually hot. So, the CPU becomes hot. The heat generated easily travels through the copper block, as copper is a good thermal conductor. Within the copper block is a tube where the liquid flows through. The heat which came from the CPU is passed to the copper block, and from the copper block is passed into the liquid. If the liquid was not flowing, all the heat would be gathered in one part of the liquid and would not be able to get rid of the heat. Therefore, we have the pump which makes sure the now warm liquid flows to the radiator. The radiator now gets rid of the heat generated inside the liquid and it then goes on its cycle again of being in the reservoir, then being pumped into the block, picking up heat from the block, then flowing again to the radiator to get rid of the heat. This is one type of water cooling. There's another type that's so uncommon that no one's actually bothered to agree on a name for it. Let's just call it liquid submerged PC. This setup is for ultimate maniacs. Remember I said earlier that most coolants don't conduct electricity and are also good thermal conductives? This is the key to the project. How it's done is, you go to your local ebay.com and buy a few litres of coolant. People will think you're weird, not until they know what you're doing. So basically, you fill either a fish tank or something similar with a coolant. Then you take out everything in your computer case and simply dump it into the coolant filled aquarium. As coolant doesn't conduct electricity, all your components are fine and the coolant also moves the heat away from the hot parts of your computer. There are a few disadvantages I can think of. First of all, I'm pretty sure you avoided your warranty. Next problem is that the standard hard drive has fast moving parts within it. If you put, in, put it into something as thick as coolant, then due to the hole in the case of the hard drive, the fast parts won't be able to work fast and therefore you have destroyed your hard drive. Another problem is, if you haven't connected something properly or you need to upgrade the parts of your computer, then you're done for, as all your components will be covered in thick oil. Right, I know this seems complicated, so feel free to ask me questions. I'll take all the good questions and I'll make a frequently asked questions section in the description. Thank you for watching.